Thank you guys so much for joining. I am going to close out of my Slack. They will just have to do without me for the next 30 minutes. Appreciate you guys joining today. I will go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Ashley Jenkins. I am an events manager here at Miro. I also currently lead our Black Excellence ERG. And I'm excited today to share some just uh, tips and tricks and best practices um, that our Black Excellence ERG uses to foster engagement. Um, our ERG is a global ERG, and so um, we have leveraged our own product, the Mirror Board, to build connectiveness um, within our group. And I will toss it over to Grace to introduce herself. And then I'll also share the board link in the chat. Grace, one second, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? Am I still muted? Nope, you're perfect now. Okay, it, that's so weird. It didn't have the little red X on it. So, okay, um, okay let me start again. <laughs> um, hola, my name is Grace. Um, I lead Somos Miro here at Miro. <laughs> that's our Latinx ERG. And I am also the global procurement manager um, as my normal day to day. Um, I also uh, work with Ashley very closely on uh, multiple ERG, just uh, you know, coming together and helping each other raise raise ourselves up. Um, but we also use uh, our boards to make sure that we can connect globally. So that's um, either synchronously or asynchronously. Um, so super excited to share with you guys how we've been doing that. Amazing. So I have shared the board link in the chat. So if you could head on over to the board, this will be an interactive session. So hope you guys can hop on board and have fun with us. Um, again, if you don't mind, oh, okay, we have, I'm just checking out the chat. Hi, Anna, your behalf on your Phillips Women Lead. Thank you so much for joining us. Can we get some folks in the chat letting us know where they're joining us from, whether it's um, location, their company, um, if you're a part of an ERG, if you could go ahead and put that in the hop in chat, I'd love to know where people are joining us from and what our audience um, background is. So feel free to put that in the chat and let us know. From Spain. In the Netherlands, we have an office in the Netherlands. Thank you, Anna. Kwanda, Iowa, I've not been to Iowa, one of the many states I have not been to. Mei Huang, nice to, nice to have you join us. Celia, we have Giovanni, who's a part of our Black Excellence ERG. Thank you so much for joining Giovanni. Anika, Raina, awesome, awesome. So it looks like we have a really global audience. Don't have an ERG, Stephanie, other types of groups. Amazing, awesome. So let's go over the agenda today. So we've already done our quick introductions. And as I mentioned, I've been the Black Excellence ERG for about two years here. And so the majority of this has been during the pandemic. And so as you can imagine, um, joining a company and trying to find a community of people that you can interact with virtually um, was a challenge. Um, I'm used to coming um, to ERGs and being able to interact with uh, other members in person and have worked for other tech companies where we have city-based ERGs and not necessarily a global ERG. And so how do you, how do, you do this when you're when you're remote or hybrid. So right now, here's a quick uh, slide on our some of our ERG um, events that we've had. Um, as I mentioned, we use Miro just to connect with one another, um, whether it's synchronously or asynchronously. It helps us provide a safe space. Um, we like to leverage the board and be our most authentic selves. Um, so some of the icebreakers and things that we're going to do are not necessarily your standard um, icebreakers, but I like to lean into culture and um, bring my authentic self through um, some of the activities and things that we do for our events and meetings. So let's talk about synchronous connections. So synchronous connections are when you're all together at the same time, similar to 
a meeting or an event where you're all together at the same time. Hi, hi, Natalie. Thank you for joining. So for meetings, so we actually host our meetings in Miro on a Miro board, and we have a we have a different cadence for our meetings. Um, in the beginning, we were doing it biweekly. Um, we tried to cut that back down because of the meeting fatigue um, in coordination with the different time zones. So we're meeting about once a month um, on a monthly basis, and it's for our U.S. Uh, members. Uh, we have members in EMEA as well as APAC. It is um, challenging with the time zones to find a a time that works for everyone. But with the mirror board, and Grace will chat with you a little bit about this in the asynchronous section, you can kind of have like a watering hole or a hub where people can come together if you're not um, able to meet with them. But if you do have a synchronous meeting, you can share the board. Um, and if you record your meetings, you can share that with them for them to, to go through that presentation um, on their own time. So as you can see on the board, and Give me a show of, uh, in the chat if you've used Miro before um, or you're just joining for our specific session. I understand that not everyone um, may um, be a Miro user. and Maybe they just decided to join because they saw that this session was on ERGs. Um, so users, users. OK, awesome. So yeah, we use, as you can see here, we use the frames as like our presentation slides, frequent users. Okay, you're using Miro, Miro Genevieve. So we use the frames as our presentation slide. And just as you can see from the very beginning, every meeting we set up um, our, our meeting with an agenda and topic. So we're going through different things as we would with any other meeting, um, talking about a variety of things from company announcements, um, we really cater this messaging towards our groups. So with, with you know, remote situations right now, it's Slack. And there's a lot of Slack messages that fly in and out. And so it's really hard to, to, to kind of weed through all of that. And so it's just, uh, we use Miro to uh, provide those updates and look at it from like the lens of um, our different ERG perspectives. So, for example, Grace, I don't know if you remember, we did um, a, a talk and we had a mirror board for when we had our stock um, options talk about all the stocks that we have and how we can leverage them and what our stocks mean. And so we had messages that were sent out through our Slack channels, but we had specific sessions using a mirror board to discuss our what well, the implications are for for um, using our stocks and all the information about that, because sometimes there you need to go a little bit more deeper. Um, Grace, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that, because um, you guys helped organize that, our Somos ERG. Yeah, absolutely. So it was definitely just a conversation. I think it's important to know, obviously, we're talking about ERGs, diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, it's important to note that people of color generally, probably it's their first time working with equity. I know that for myself, it was my first time working with equity. Um, and just reading a Slack message wasn't enough for me to understand what was going on. Um, so what we did is we kind of just put together a quick meeting with um, the Black Excellence ERG um, and pulled in our stock admin to not really tell us what to do, because obviously they can't do that, um, but kind of dig deeper into what the implications are if you have vested stock and you decide to purchase it. What are the tax implications if you're in EMEA? What are the tax implications if you're in the U.S.? Um, you know, what does it mean if you don't? buy your equity and you want to just let it continue to keep vesting until the company goes public. Um, so just really digging into that, because that's something at least that I had never really gotten a, a full understanding of. And so for me, I thought it was important for everyone to kind of feel like they could dig a little deeper. And I think that was a super successful session. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we recorded it and also shared it with our um, members who were unable to to be at that meeting as well. Awesome. So I see a comment in the chat from, I think it's Aaliyah. Let me know if I'm mispronouncing your name. See so a note to use presentation mode in Miro. Yes, we do have a presentation mode in Miro. I'm happy to do that. Um, we are going to be doing some activities. So I want to have a little bit more control um, over um, the presentation. But thank you for the note in the comment. Um, I'm going to keep going through. So as I mentioned, um, with our presentations and our meetings, we have frames and we set up. 
one second. Sorry, guys. This is your space. Let me mute. I have a lot of tabs open, so I guess someone um, was on the stage. Um, so awesome. Uh, I've created a lot of icebreakers just to open up our meetings. Uh, it's a great way for us to learn a little bit about our members. We have new members join all the time. Um, we, our meetings are open to both members and allies. And so if you're looking for Mira, um, some icebreakers, be sure to check out icebreakers on Miraverse. There's a couple of ones that I've created and added there. But I'm going to have everyone here on the board test out a quick icebreaker that we've done at one of our meetings. So let me guys, let, you, let me know how you're feeling today. Um, and go ahead and pick up a dot and place it over the meme that most appropriately resonates with you on how you're feeling today. And it's okay to be honest, not everyone is uh, feeling A-OK. -okay. You could be struggling. I might have to put mine on the kind of trying to make it str <laughs> struggle um, art as well because Events are very stressful, but um, they're rewarding as well. But right now we're in the midst of distributed, so lots of moving pieces and things flying around. Um, so this is an icebreaker that we actually did during one of our meetings where we wanted to gauge people's um, sentiment and mood at the beginning of the, the meeting. Um, I really enjoy um, leaning into culture and leaning into things that are authentic. So you that's the beauty of Miro is that you can you can do that. So awesome. I like the I I I I, I wish I could do the one with the guy on the phone and just like just call <laughs> people. Yeah. Talking. And I'm I would just add like icebreakers are a great way to start any meeting, not specifically just at ERGs, even if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one, a check with your um, you know, with your manager, or if you're running an agile event, it's a great way to break the ice, obviously icebreaker, so that people can feel like that sense of just, it's not all business, but you know, there's, there's fun in what we're doing. Um, it really, I think, sets the mood for people to be a little more open if you're opening with how you're feeling, right? So I think icebreakers are a great way to start any meeting. Awesome. And then we also have uh, an icebreaker from our Somos ERG. I'm going to zoom out and let Grace tell you guys a little bit about this icebreaker that they did for their for their meeting. Yeah. So this was an icebreaker. It was, um, I can't, let me just, I'll zoom in on mine right here. So um, you can't really see it here, but it's uh, Miro Migo. So it's uh, DJ Miro Migo. And he's trying to figure out what tracks to add to his playlist. So basically, we asked our group just to add what they're listening to right now, what, what they want to hear, what they've been listening to, what's exciting. Um, and then we added it to a playlist. And then everybody could listen to all those songs together. So this is something um, that really helped us open up the you know, the day, the conversation. And I know a lot of our members after this uh, icebreaker were, lis was, were listening to this playlist for the rest of the day, which really just helps, you know, like amp people up and get ready for um, like a positive day. And I definitely think that um, this is a great icebreaker um, that can lead itself into more asynchronous connection because you can listen to the playlist when you're at work, when you're working mm -hmm. in your downtime, your focus time, but it's a collaborative playlist that you guys all made together and you can go back and recall, oh yeah, that's the song that Grace really likes or that's so-and-so's favorite yeah. song. So I really love this icebreaker. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way for people to connect, um, not just like, obviously this was something we did synchronously, but um, even asynchronously after the fact. Awesome. So icebreakers are something that we definitely do on the boards within our meetings, but we also do activities. Um, activities, I consider activities longer icebreakers. Um, your icebreakers are typically five to 10 minutes. Um, we um, do a ton of activities through our, uh, our meetings, um, so it's not all just business. It's just also a way for us to connect with one another. Um, 
it's it's a great way to provide a sense of belonging. Um, activities could be just for fun. We've played Uno. We've played a lot of different fun games. And here in a second, I'm going to show you a quick example of another game that we've played um, designed in Miro. But we've also just used the activities as well to expand upon a, a topic um, and further to deep dive into it. So it can be both play and business. But we're going to go ahead and uh, hop down on a activity and then I'll pass it over to Grace and she will take you through it. So let me give you guys the instructions. So this game is called One Gotta Go. Um, is there a setting, sorry, one question. Is there a setting for something that is stopping me from getting to the icebreaker? I had the same issue in the last session. Click the links and always takes me to the conference talk board. What am I doing wrong? Um, I'm not sure, Joshua. Let me go ahead and put the link here in the chat. Hopefully you're able to join us because I would love for you to participate in this activity. Um, let me know if you're still experiencing any um, issues. But for this activity, um, it's called One Gotta Go and it's a black owned game. Um, actually it's a physical game, but they also have a virtual version as well. And so for this, um, this was in the height of the pandemic. I purchased the virtual game. And as you can see, these are the individual cards. They're actually just pictures um, of different um, cards of the physical game. And the object of this activity is for folks to, all right, Joshua, give me one second. It's taking you to the conference. Or you're not able to participate. Maybe, Grace, do you have a note to say for that? No, I was just gonna keep talking about the one gotta go if you wanted to help. Joshua. Okay, yeah, let's do that, perfect. Yeah. So um, one got to go, um, as Ashley was mentioning, she purchased uh, the game so that she could put it on the mirror board. Basically what you do is you pick one of the things on the card that's got to go. So um, you get the question. So let, we'll just go off the first one here. One got to go, A, Billie Jean, B, Thriller, C, Man in the Mirror, or D, Rock with You. So these are not made to be simple or easy. You really got to think about which one you would get rid of. Um, Ashley, did you want to open up for people to to pick which one they think they got that's got to go? Yes. Yeah, so actually, I have this set up for um, using the voting feature within Miro. So I'll show you how to use the voting feature in Miro. So if you see me on the screen, I am going to go to the, the menu bar at the top and click on the voting feature. And so the voting feature works um, in a way that it's anonymous. As you can see, when we did the um, the dot voting for our sentiment, that one was really, you can click on the object and see who last moved it. So it's not really anonymous, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna set up a voting session for us. So I click the area that I want to vote. And as you can see here, um, it's going to, we have one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm gonna give everyone five votes. It's a new session that I'm creating and we're gonna be voting on the sticky notes. So I'm gonna click this item here. So you're gonna vote on A, B, C, or D of for each associated card on which one has to go. And I'm gonna give everyone two minutes to let me know which one has to go. So. I've started the session. If you're on the board, go ahead and vote now. So I'm going to say not now because I don't need to participate. Don't want to influence anyone. But go ahead and click on the sticky note to place your vote. And I see one person has voted already. If you need to add more time, you can also add more time to the timer. And so this is anonymous voting, as you can see. So let me know if you are able to vote. Let me open the chat up again. Chat. If you're having issues, please let me know. Joshua, I'm not sure why it's still sending you to. You cleared your cash. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? I've been experiencing some issues too as well with cookies. Not sure how they work, but they do some really strange things. Three people, four people. It's tough too, because some of the questions on here are really hard to decide. Like, 
like this one, communication, honesty, intimacy, and respect. I would hope we could keep all of those things, but it's a, it's, it's a tough one. Can you vote on mobile? Um, unfortunately, I don't know if you're able to vote on mobile. Um, if you have the mirror board open on your phone, but I'm assuming you're also on the session um, for hopping. So let me know. Oh, that's Lucy. Hey, Lucy. I didn't even recognize your name. Thank you for joining the session. Lucy is our lovely mirror board um, designer for um, our events, event boards. So if you haven't seen them, and I am so in on them, so I'm going to show them, even though this is my session, I still want to plug Lucy. If you haven't visited our event boards, please do so. There's some Easter eggs on there that you don't want to miss. But yeah, looks like the results are preparing here. We All can right. See them on now. So we have votes. OK, so these are just the top three of votes. But if we open up this here, you'll be able to see. And I'm going to zoom in and let's see what people would like to do. So it looks like we're getting rid of man in the mirror. We're getting rid of intimacy. We're getting rid okay. of never aging. And we're also getting rid of landlords. This one's kind of a toss up between your phone and streaming platforms. Yeah. Thank you guys. And would, yeah, and I would just add that to these activities, like one thing that we've done, um, not just for our groups, but something you can do if you'd like to get together with another ERG group is we did Loteria. So it's basically like, um, Loteria is basically like bingo, but the Spanish version of bingo. And we actually were able to get that onto a mirror board. And we did a like networking event with um, Zoom and their uh, Latinx ERG, which is also called Somos. And that was just a great way for us to, to get to know people and kind of talk about um, how we can improve our ERGs, what each other is doing. Like that's really a great way to grow your ERG and also be able to bring back information that might also um, empower your ERG to get more people um, activated and, and to get there. Yeah, this was a fun session. We did this one with Zoom. And so we had Loteria cards. We did this all virtually where people could pick up the beans and that was a great one. Yeah, so activity is super great way, not just to engage your ERG, but also to engage other ERGs as well. Um, and just to talk to people, see like, you know, best set uh, ideas or what they've seen work, what they've seen hasn't work, that type of thing. Amazing. Awesome. Well, I'm going to pass it over to Grace, who's going to talk to us a little bit more about some asynchronous engagement. Yeah. So um, as we mentioned, obviously, uh, our company is very global. So our ERGs are also very global. So um, we like to celebrate different types of um, heritage months. Um, that's always something that, you know, Ashley and I are like feel very strong about. Um, we also have to make sure that that is something that can cross globally, right? There are some months that are celebrated in the US that aren't celebrated in maybe EMEA or APAC, but they're celebrated in EMEA and APAC at a different time. So it's kind of just finding that sweet spot. Um, but we like to spotlight those events regardless. So async working on the boards is really great for, for that type of thing. Also, just in general, for being global, you know, it, it's important for people to feel like they're still connected, um, even if you don't have the physical ability to be in person or on a call. Um, so, yeah, like we've we've done a lot of really great thing. We, we try to compile our resources, um, as Ashley's put here. Um, on templates, or we try to outline, um, you know, like we spoke about um, going over and talking about like equity. So like outlining financial literacy and support for professional developments. Um, so we put some examples down here in terms of celebration. Um, I just wanted to share with you what Somos, our Latinx ERG did this year for Heritage Month. Um, we basically put together a whole board where people could walk through the board. As you can see here, there was a way to get festive, which was Zoom background. So you could come to this board at any point, download the Zoom background, make sure that you could um, put it up so that you, you felt like you were engaged. Um, we had a playlist so people could add to that playlist on Spotify at any point. Again, listening to that playlist throughout the month. Um, you could join multiple events. So we have, um, at least uh, for our Somos ERG, we have a wonderful leadership team um, and a social 
and a social chair that takes care of that for us. And so they put together a ton of events globally um, for our teams to join. And you could find that information here on the board. We had a charity um, option so where we could give back. Um, and so all of this is things that were done asynchronously. You didn't have to be in any meetings to, to get it. Uh, it was basically just hop on the board um, and we'd share that again, like via our Slack channels um, and share it with the company at large. What we also did is we did spotlights for employees. So it was once a week, we would have a spotlight of an employee where they came from, what heritage month means to them. Um, and all of that was also then saved back onto our boards. Um, another thing that you can see here is there's a video that's attached to this Heritage Month. Um, Ashley, we're running a little short on time, so I don't think we need to play it, but basically the video walks you through how excited we are for Heritage Month and it'll walk you through the board, which is a great feature that we have on Miro as well, where you can record yourself going through the board so people don't actually have to be on the board with you. They can come back to it later, watch you go through the board and understand what everything means. So that's like a great async opportunity. Um, and in terms of resources, as we were talking about, we also did um, a career development aspect for our Heritage Month. So basically our career development was a separate board where you can hop on and kind of set yourself up for success. I think a lot of the times really difficult for people to understand like how to ask for a raise or how to feel authentically themselves at work. And so that can create an issue where you feel like maybe you just need to not speak up and just someone will see how good you're doing at your job. Unfortunately, that is not how things work. So we wanted people to feel like they had all the tools to make the decisions to go into those conversations with confidence. So we put together a career development board um, where people could come to it on our Heritage Month board, not having to uh, be in any meeting or anything specific about uh, any times that you have to come do it at. It's just always available for people to come back to. And I think this is super important because sometimes people maybe um, can feel like embarrassed or confused and they don't want to ask questions. So this is a great way for people to just feel like ownership without having to be um, you know, feel like they're being uh, put on in a spotlight when they're asking a question. So um, it's a great way to engage your ERGs for them to, you know, eventually feel like comfortable enough to come ask questions. And then you can kind of decide, oh, maybe this is something really important we need to talk about. And you make it a topic for your next meeting. Awesome. Yeah, I think um, having a resource um, that's shared internally um, on things like the career development, um, for other people who have been in your personal situation and know how to help to help you learn how to advocate for yourself. Um, and a lot of the times, um, if you're from an underrepresented minority, this could be your first tech job. And so you don't necessarily know the ins and outs of how um, things work, like your stock, your career progression, asking for a promotion and things like that. And you don't want to feel embarrassed. Like you, it's, it's, it's nice to ask someone who has a similar background um, on topics like that. Um, so I think that's a great resource. Um, awesome. So we have three minutes. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have questions, I'm happy to stay and answer um, any questions. Feel free to put them in the chat. Um, as I mentioned, we have, we have templates um, for icebreakers on Miroverse. So if you haven't checked that out, go to miroverse.com for different templates. There's a few of them that I've done as well. Um, but if you just have general questions or maybe you have a remote ERG um, and you just are trying to increase engagement, let us know. We're happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, it's great for onboarding as well. Um, you could you can create a board that gives someone like the ins and outs um, of everything you need to know about the ERG, even about the company. Um, I think looking at it from the lens of um, someone from your same background is, is amazing. Yeah, and also definitely using the feature where you're walking through the board, it follows you and there's a video of you going through the board in each aspect. That's definitely helpful for when you're um, working with you know, 28 chapters, as you see here. I'm curious to know if anyone is in an ERG that's global, what are you, or like remote, what are you currently using? Are you just using Slack and Zoom? What are you using to stay connected? Teams, okay. Anyone else? 
Do you have like wiki pages and confluence pages? You use a dedicated MS Teams, okay. Awesome. I like Miro because there's so many like media outputs you can do. You can embed a PDF, you can, you can create slides, you can go to Google and search and add Google photos. You can, what else can you do? Videos, YouTube videos, everything like you wanna do on a board. Um, it just keeps it in one place. And sometimes it doesn't fit necessarily easy on like a, a Google doc or something like that. Nadella emails on our global page, okay. And Miro is great um, because the boards are always there unless someone deletes the board, which generally doesn't um, often happen. But say someone wanted to go back to that heritage board and read the, um, the spotlights on our uh, Miro Somos employees, they could always go back there at any point, whether it's September, October, you know, it could be August of 2025 and that board's still there. You can go see that information. It's always live. It's always there. Um, and the boards are really great too, because I'll say this, Ashley, I have definitely gone to the Black Excellence meetings and seen some of the icebreakers you've done and then tried to do the same icebreakers in our SOMOS meeting because they're really, really interesting and always fun. So uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, joining other meetings is a great way to get information. And I can always go back to those boards and see what was done, um, just in case I don't want to duplicate what you've recently done. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for the kind words, Lucy. Yes, the imagery. Um, it definitely needs some improvement, um, especially to, to make it more authentic for our communities, for sure. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. The session will be available for replay. Um, so check back here later today um, and we will have that there for you. And if you have any questions, again, my email is Ashley at Miro. So feel free to reach out to me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye, guys. Bye.